Hello, Gene Batoka here with another how-to video for HobbyFanatic.com. Today I'm going to show you how to lace up one of these. This is a bike wheel done with the two-leading, two-trailing pattern, which gives you this kind of cool quadrant effect. Now, in order to build this wheel, you are going to need a 32-hole rim. This pattern only works with spoke counts that are divisible by 8, so 24, 32, 40, will give you three, four, or five sections respectively. So this is the 32 hole pattern. Now when you buy your spokes, use a two cross pattern in your calculation. All the spokes in this pattern are the same length, so that makes for an easy wheel build. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you're gonna need is your rim, obviously. And as always, start by finding and taping your valve bolt. You're also going to need this handy cheat sheet, which is also in the description below. Now, we're going to put these numbers onto the rim. Now, you, obviously, you can tape your rim or whatever. I'm going to actually write them on directly with this metallic marker just for this video. Uh, if you do use this technique, by the way, you can get the ink off with turpentine. Uh, acetone doesn't work and turpentine doesn't damage your decals. Alright? Okay, so we're going to transfer these numbers onto this rim. Now, which direction we go depends upon how our rim is drilled. Ribs today are drilled with this offset pattern and in addition to that, this is actually an offset rim. So, I want my offset to be down, away from my free hub. If I was building a front wheel, it would be the opposite. It would be away from the disc. Okay? <laughs> now, if your rim is not offset, that doesn't matter. Okay? But what does matter is if your rim is drilled with this offset pattern, you need to choose the hole closest to the valve stem that is pointing towards the drive side of the hub. Alright? So with the there we go. So on this rim, this hole is pointing up. So I am going to start going counterclockwise with the numbers from my sheet. <coughs> the first hole, L, O, 3. Okay. Now, skip a hole. That next hole is going to be for the non-drive side and go to the next one. L, I, Four. Okay. Now, one of the things that I like to do at this point is to divide the wheel into eight sections. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to draw a line here. spoke holes and all this does is since this pattern gives us nice four sections these are the sections where our colors are going to go just as an additional reference helps us catch mistakes early in the process okay now we're going to mark the other side okay so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to go to the first unmarked hole here going now this direction okay which is actually the same direction we but we flipped it over. So L O L O three. We're done. Now I'm going to flip this back over to the drive side because that's where we're going to start. Next, we're going to mark our hub. Now, the way this is traditionally done is you find the center of your decals and you point that at your valve stem. This You're going to pick a space between two holes that's lined up with that center of your decal. So I'm going to just choose right here and I'm going to mark a line like that. 
<clears throat> now I'm just going to number the holes going around. Same direction that we marked the rim for our drive side, I'm going to mark it 1, 2, 3 through 16. So this is hole number 1. I'm actually not going to mark every one. I'm going to mark 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13. That's all I'm going to mark, 13. Okay? All right. So let me just explain real quick what these numbers mean. Leading, L03 is a leading spoke outbound, and it's going to go to hole number three. All right? What is a leading spoke? Just in case you don't know, a leading spoke is one that points forward from the hub in the direction of rotation. Okay, so you have to visualize this hub in the wheel. It's going to be rotating this way in the bike. It's going to be rotating this way. So a leading spoke is leading the hub around like this, okay? Trailing spoke is from behind, okay? So trailing spoke is trailing behind, so it's in the opposite direction. Inbound, outbound is the direction that the spoke goes from the outside of the hub. So if it comes from the outside and goes down, that is an inbound spoke. And inbound spokes, you can see the head on the outside of the hub. Outbound spokes come from behind, to the back side, come up like this, and come out like that. So this is a outbound leading spoke. This is an outbound trailing spoke. So now you can start to see how the system works here. All right. <clears throat> and we're going to start by lacing all of the inbound spokes on the drive side. In, inbound leading. Number two, trailing. Two. Okay, now, one thing that's a little bit different about this pattern, or the, at least the way I've laced this pattern, is you have to start interleaving your spokes now. Normally, you're not interleaving your spokes until you're doing the outbound spokes, but we have to interleave them now. So we want our higher number spoke oops, to be under our lower number spoke. So here, four, LI4 goes under LI2. Okay, now we're ready to start on the other side. Now to know where to start, put a spoke down through hole number one, and you're gonna land straight between two holes on the bottom flange. Go slightly counterclockwise to the first hole, that's your hole number one, okay? Come over here, make your mark. That's number one. Okay, now, this time, we're gonna go clockwise because we're on the other side. So we're technically we're going on the same in the same direction, but since we flipped it over, it's clockwise. So that's one. Okay. Now. Same as the other side. This is L I four. So Okay, so now we're ready to start on our outbound spokes. So, the best way to do this, to get the interleading right, 
is to start on the higher number. So I can start on TO1 or TO3, TO1 or LO3. I'm going to start on TO, sorry, LO3. Okay, and there's no interleave there. Just go straight to the hole. So now we're going to start with one, and this is where the interleave happens. So we're going to come up through one. Okay, we're going to go over three, but we're going to go under four. Okay, that's our interleave. So that's it. So that spoke goes over three and under four, okay? And that interleaves four with three because now four is gonna be pulling up against two, okay? All right, that's it. <coughs> so let's keep going with that. Okay, that side's done. Let's go on the last side. Remember this time we're going the opposite direction. There it is, hobby fanatic fans, ready to finish your build. All right, so just kind of one last kind of wonky note on this powder, and that's it. Um, a few things about the way I lace this. If you look at other people's patterns on the web, they tend to do all the trailing spokes outbound and all the leading spokes inbound or vice versa. And what that does is that, so you'll see two heads and then two spokes, two heads, two spokes going around the hub. <clears throat> I played around with a few patterns to get it to alternate. Um, and also to interleave, make sure that there's at least one cross on every spoke. Um, so my, that's the only thing that's a little bit different about mine. It does mean you have to pay attention to interleaving the spokes on that first step like I showed. But other than that, it's not, um, not really that different. Finally, let's see, one other thing that you will hear about this pattern is that if you notice here, you have four uh, trailing spokes. Let's see, all right? Now you have four leading spokes here together and you have four trailing spokes here together. Um, so that is a little bit different than a two cross or three cross. On a two cross or three cross, you're gonna have pairs, two leading, two trailing, two leading, two trailing. Um, so in theory, under say heavy braking forces, you're gonna be pulling in these four spokes and these four spokes, and it's gonna tend to try to square off the wheel. Now, does that really matter? I don't think so, um, especially with a beefy mountain bike rim like this. I'm not at all worried about the rim deflecting in a significant way. Um, and also, if you're squaring off this part of the rim, you're forcing this section of the rim to bulge out. So as you tension these spokes, you're gonna be pretty efficiently transferring that tension to these spokes by any deflection that were to occur on the rim. So not really terribly worried about that. Um, all right, there you have it. Um, happy writing, hobby fanatic fans, man.